So this here is the church that uh, I was baptized in. Yep. Uh, and this is also the church that uh, mom and dad were married in. Yep. Yeah, it's a really nice church. Beautiful. So Nanny and I are on our way to Oak Island. <laughs> and we're in Chester, is it? Yeah. Well, we're, we're on the no. western shore. Western shore. And we're going in to have lunch. Oh, we're living large. We have an ocean. Oh, it's blurry. Okay, let me start. There we go. That's better. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we've got a... Apparently we have a view of the ocean from our room. See, so they updated us to a larger room. That's pretty cool. And we got our keys and everything. Facing the got ocean. Got our pass. And the Oak Island treasure book. That's Oak Island there, but you'll see more of it later. Atlantica. Alright, so this is our hotel room. It's beautiful. Got our beds, bathroom, TV, fridge, desk. This is nice. And check out the view. <laughs> That's beautiful. And I think, we think that that might be Oak Island just there. But we'll find out soon enough. Causeway. Yeah. They have also been the cause of bitter rivalries, dashed hopes, and tragic deaths. Ooh. This is very exciting. Foundation, and this is where the homestead of the McGinnis family lived. Uh, according to the legend, was about 14, 15 years old when he rode over from Shurham, which is now Chester, uh, because he had heard, and everybody in the, who living in Shurham at that time knew that there was something weird about Oak Island, right? It was kind of a taboo place. People didn't really come here. Uh, there was just something weird about it. Notice that there was a 13-foot diameter depression underneath the limb of a lone oak tree. Well, his imagination started to really work overtime because most of the people who came to Shoreham were from the New York area, that part of New England, and uh, they would be United Empire Loyalists. So uh, they knew about Captain Kidd, they knew about piracy, because actually Captain Kidd worked out of New York. So he excavated it down, right down here on the shore and what he discovered was it's a slipway or a wharf. Now he started excavating underneath of this and uh, we got down about eight feet and that's when he found the two leather shoes, one of which is in our tour building. It is a massive engineering works both above and below ground on Oak Island. Wow. It would have to be a military or a civilian engineer who did this. No pirate did anything on Oak Island. You'd need a military or civilian engineer to do it. <laughs> the Hammond Brothers. It saw, he saw it beat Captain Bodine. He saw it beat Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He saw it beat Simeon Linz. He saw it beat uh, everybody right back to 1795. And right now, the island is beating everyone. It has not given up her secrets, or I should say, it's not given up her treasure. And it still to this day has not relinquished that. Hopefully within the next few months, we're, that will change. <laughs> uh, the reason that they do not allow people on the island, there's three reasons. One, it is private property. Once you cross that causeway, actually the causeway is private property too, but once you cross that causeway, you're on lot 21. And that is owned by the Michigan Group. Number two, it is an active treasure site. So they're quite guarded about that. But more importantly, and that's number three, is that it is a dangerous place to go if you don't know where you're going. Each arm of the cross is 360 feet in length. <laughs> now, the arm to the vertical, or the vertical of, of it, would be uh, an exact 90 
degrees. The reason they call it a Latin or Christian cross is that that represents where Jesus' feet would be nailed to the cross. Buried under about three feet underground, Fred Nolan found a 10-ton sandstone boulder that in profile, and there's pictures of it in that book and also all over the internet, in profile looks like a human, a human face. You can see the, where the mouth would be, you can see the nostrils, you can see the, where the eye socket would be, and there is an indentation in the forehead or temple region where you can put a cutlass. Now quite uh, incidentally, when he acquired the property, he also came into possession of a rusty old cutlass. Whether by design or by fluke, the cutlass fit perfectly into this indentation on the sandstone monument. Uh, they were doing some work here. They were getting ready to put this grid in, and somebody got careless either with a cigarette or with some brush that they were burning. And there were seven fire departments here, Department of Lands and Forest, and they had a water bomber standing by. They thought they were going to lose a whole island. Hence, no smoking on Oak Island. I just want to point out a couple things before we continue. If you look out here to the ocean, there's very few spots from the open ocean where Oak Island is actually visible. It's well protected by these islands. It makes a perfect spot to hide something. Now, quite coincidentally, this is the only island in the 360 plus islands in this bay that has oak trees on it. Acorns do not float. They will not float. When they're dry, they will float, but they will not germinate. They believe that whoever did this planted the oak trees on Oak Island for a specific reason, as a marker. Because it is the only island that they have found oak trees on. It is also the only island that they have found coconut fiber on. And the closest palm tree is 2,000 miles from here. They have never found coconut fiber on any other island in Mahone Bay or any other island in Nova Scotia. Coconut fiber was used as dunnage in ships. Nowadays, they use those little styrofoam nuggets for packing. In those days, they would use coconut fiber because it doesn't rot. The stone triangle was an equilateral triangle. Each side was 10 feet in length. It was made up of small granite beach stones about the size of a person's head. Half of the beach stone was ex exposed above ground. The base of the triangle ran perfectly east and west. It had an arc of stones on the bottom, and it had a medial line of stones running from the apex stone, which, by the way, had a cross curved in it. it took a transit and took a sight line along the medial line of stones. It pointed true north. In other words, it pointed to the North Star. Also, if you ran a line from that, it would run through the money pit and then through to a what we call a drilled rock, which was 50 feet uh, north of the money pit has deemed that there are no more trade yeah. control uh, uh, yeah. because they view them as trade So they came over here and they brought picks and shovels and pry bars and buckets and what have you. And they came up to this depression and started digging. Down at two feet they hit a layer of flagstones. Now flagstones are not native to Oak Island. They believe they were brought here from the mouth of the Gold River, which yeah. is not far from here. At ten feet down they hit a layer of oak logs. Now, as they're going down, they didn't need the pry bars. They didn't need the picks because the soil was loose. It wasn't virgin soil. All they needed was a bucket and a shovel. Now, some reports say that they stopped at 20. Some reports say that they stopped at 30. But each 10-foot level, as they went down, they hit a layer of oak logs. But they realized that this was just three much, too much for three young boys to do and allowed the water to enter the flood tunnel. It activated the flooding system on, on Smith's Cove activated the flooding tunnel, and then came up through the money pit. Now, La Have, the, at the mouth of La Have River, that was actually a pirate base at one time. <laughs> and of course, you have Liverpool, which was a privateer base during the American Revolution and, and the War of 1812. But Captain Bodine could not accept the fact that he beat him. He wrote an article in Collier's Magazine.
when this is pumped out, it's 180 feet down. That's equivalent to an 18-story building. Whoa. Started out as a six-inch borehole. Now, at 140, between 140 and 160 feet, they brought up bits of spruce, some oak, bits of metal, which is sent to Stelco and analyzed, and also bits of chain. We thought X marks the spot. Camera, they had it down in this cavern at 235. It showed up three chests, two flat top, and one curve. And the flat top and the curve, there's pictures of it that are taken off the videotape in our, in our tour building. Also, it showed a body leaning up against one of the walls. Now, they spoke to forensic pathologists, and the, before the water came in there, uh, it is possible for a body to be preserved. He's screaming into the headphones on his mic. Get me up, get me up, get me up, get me up. It was repeated. We still have the audio recordings. That's back to work. Anyway, she's plowing a field here, and her oxen fall into this pit. It's about 8 feet wide, maybe 10, 12 feet deep. He believed that this cave-in pit was actually an extraction shaft or an air shaft during the construction of the uh, Money Pit Tunnel. And they'd haul this mechanism up there, fill it full of soil from 10x, and let gravity take it down here. He was observed leaning over the pit, just like this, and he fell in and heard the screaming. His wife came running, his son Ricky came running, Bobby came running. Other people who were on the island came running. Bobby clambers down trying to save his father. He might have thought he had a heart attack or, or, or whatever, just overcome by something and fell in. Bobby falls in. Eventually there's six men at the bottom of this pit. Huh. Foul smell coming from the pit. One by the original depositors to construct this flooding system. Been below ground. They have estimated it would take 100 men three years to do all the work on Oak Island. I can't believe I'm standing here on Oak Island. It's so crazy. Unbelievable. So he was saying before that this beach here is apparently artificial. Or that's what they think it is anyway. That the swamp behind the beach, um, they built the beach to hide the swamp or something like that, because there was actually a cove originally that uh, went to the center of the island and they found a ship in the swamp, I think, or something like that. <laughs> but it's very cool. I can't believe we're actually here. Bloody amazing. Actually seeing it, it's not what I imagined, but it's ten times better. 10x, ten times. And that's the huge boulder there that uh, there's a cross that goes across the island. And that's one of the points of the cross. Just casually strolling along Oak Island. No big deal. Just going for a walk. <laughs> this is Daniel McGuinness's home. He was the one who's discovered the money pit. I love it. And to actually be here is just unbelievable. It's so crazy. Okay, so it's Nanny's birthday. It's Wednesday, and uh, we're just celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> we had quite a good day today. We had lots of family and friends, and the surprise was Janet and Ivan brought Sam down to me. That was really nice. <laughs> and we had birthday cake and ice cream and coffee and booze. <laughs> and lots of, lots of presents. <laughs> yeah. it and up. money. And <laughs> money, yeah. Gift cards. And You're rich now. And I mean, you know, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, now you had to go to the hospital, but um, yeah. I'm back here. Yeah, for a birthday. Uh, yeah. I've been saying Grammy and Grampies, so um, yeah. Can you put that on the big computer tonight? Will we get that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can uh, mash oh, it all together. Oh, I forgot yeah. to say hi to Katie. Yeah. I haven't forgotten you, Katie, at all. I'm dying to see you someday. So you better get on that plane within five years and come over and visit me. Because <laughs> we're going to go to not only Dollarama, but we're going to go to some high spots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Birthday awesomeness on a plate. Mm hmm? So birthday awesomeness on a plate. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Birthday awesomeness on a oh. plate. <laughs> I need you just like a girl. I've never felt this way.